Thank you for joining. My name is David. I'm the Senior Technical Manager for Infinity Energy Services. I deal with heat pumps, I go out and do heat losses, and run the teams that fit heat pumps in your homes. So what I'm going to do now is just a very quick, basic uh, example of what a heat pump does and how it works with the vapour compression cycle. The components inside a heat pump are really, really simple. So I always start over here on the left hand side, that's a heat exchanger. Heat pumps have two, so here's the other one. Really simple, they're basically identical. The other components we have is a compressor, this is a scroll compressor, and then over here we would have an expansion valve. Simple so far. So, this is a sealed circuit, so nothing escapes, nothing can be added. So we'll start here with some refrigerant. So refrigerant comes this way and up. At this point, it's just a very, very cold liquid. This is a heat exchanger, so we'll send some heat across here. So that can be from water, it can be from air, it can be from ground. All we need to do is lift the, the temperature of this heat exchanger just a little bit to turn this liquid into a gas. So it's a low pressure, gas refrigerant and then once it's a gas we can go into the compressor where it compresses it and squeezes it down really really tight and that will load it for about eight times the amount of energy into a small space so now it's loaded it with high pressure and it comes out so it's a high pressure gas and that's where the gas will condense so it's the reverse of over the other side so now we've got a high pressure liquid the reason why it's gone from a gas to a liquid is we're now taking energy away. I'll explain that in a second. Then now at the bottom goes into the expansion vessel or expansion valve and that expands the refrigerant and when you expand the refrigerant the temperature plummets. So it's gone from a low pressure liquid into a low pressure gas into a high pressure gas into a high pressure liquid and then back to a low pressure liquid again. So now we know the basics of the vapour compression cycle. It's not a new thing, it's been around since around about 1830s. Uh, the first refrigerant I believe was ammonia, but obviously different refrigerants of different blends have got better and better as things gone on. The only difference is the heat exchangers get smaller, the compressors get more efficient, and the expansion valve gets more active. So we're not talking about reverse cycle, we're not talking about enhanced vapour injection, this is just a basic vapour compression cycle. So, now I know how it works, we can start talking a bit about the temperatures. So, we don't need loads and loads of air and temperature coming across one side. The fan, which is running the air across the heat exchanger, that will be modulating. And it modulates depending on what temperature this is up here and what state it's in. As long as we can take enough energy out of the air to change the phase from a liquid to a gas, we can load that gas of energy with a compressor. And it really doesn't get much easier than that. So down this side, we will have a receiver dryer. And that's like a reservoir of liquid. <clears throat> the liquid will go through the expansion valve. This will be looking up here and depending on the temperature up here, depends on how open this valve will get. The more open the valve gets, the lower the pressure, the cooler the refrigerant will boil away. So all we're looking for is a temperature rise in here of around about five degrees C. As long as we can maintain that five degrees C, roughly, then we can change from a liquid to a gas. We can't compress a liquid, but we can compress a gas. So the gas will go up and through the compressor. That makes sense, we can take heat out of that gas to condense it, turn it from a gas to a liquid. And people get confused, what's high pressure, what's low pressure, what's liquid, and what's a gas? So really, really simple thing to do. If we draw it out like this, we can put a line straight down. That's simple, isn't it? So everything to the left, is low pressure and everything to the right is high pressure. So that's nice and simple. 
and then we can bring another line horizontally. If then above is a vapour and everything below is a liquid. So now we can see the four states and pressures of a vapour compression cycle. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't matter whether you've got a monoblock system or a split system, some people call it a bi-block system. All these components are in heat pumps and some heat pumps have more. On a monoblock system, everything is outside in the outside shell. But with a split system, the condenser is usually inside the property.